Hi, it's John Holloman. We're on our way back to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, where some folks without much movie star quality continue to make their way under the list of people we know on a first-name basis. People like Matt Gollumbeck, Pete Smith, Donna Shirley. Another household name is that of John Zarella, a man who has taken this complicated story and made it simple enough even for me to understand. Old friend, I hear you've gotten a sneak preview of today's picture show. Is this going to be another one of those knock-our-socks-off days? Well, it may well be. The interesting feature will be the first fender bender on Mars. Uh, the, uh, the Sojourner rover drove a little too close to uh, Yogi. What happened was that the sniffer, the spectrometer, did not hit where it was supposed to. When the spectrometer didn't hit, the vehicle kept going to a predetermined place, and the front wheel actually rolled up onto Yogi. So the image will show Sojourner with its wheel rolled up on top of Yogi, and they're going to have to back off now and uh, then reposition Sojourner and make another attempt. These things they've practiced in the past, but uh, this is a situation that, uh, you know, they'd hoped wouldn't happen, but it did. So we have the first fender bender uh, on Mars. And John, 200,000 hits on the internet so far this week. Some tremendous interest still being generated by this Mars Pathfinder and Sojourner mission. John? Yeah, uh, let me ask you about a fender bender. When I have fender benders in my car, that means there's some damage to the car. Is there any any thought that maybe there's some damage to the Sojourner rover? No, does not appear to be. In the image, you can see that none of the body of the vehicle hit. It just rolled up that one wheel. So now we're going to go on inside and uh, listen to the briefing. They're starting to talk now. 81 megabits of data, uh, which again is uh, more than we were obviously expecting to have, but we've been able to transmit uh, for approximately three hours uh, on the high gain uh, yesterday. Uh, among other things, uh, things we did yesterday were to, to uh, things that were downlinked were more of the insurance pan uh, that we acquired prior to deploying the, the imp mast, uh, the rover movie that Justin will speak about in a few minutes, um, a number of uh, images acquired during the night of the atmosphere, the pictures of stars, uh, and also sunrise and sunset images, and the standard meteorology information that we get every day. Um, so that's that comprise the bulk of the, uh, the, the lander activities. Uh, the rover activity yesterday, um, as was probably discussed yesterday, was to, uh, we're still attempting to get the AP access on the, on the rock we call um, Yogi. Uh, yesterday, the, the, land, the rover was instructed to back around in sort of a circular path, and actually why don't we put up the first image, you guys can see where we ended up, uh, to back around from approximately down here essentially backed around to the point where it was going to put the APXS right here on this near vertical face right here. Uh, and as you can see, it's a little bit hard to see in this image, but uh, what happened was that the lander or the rover uh, moved a little bit further than we expected and actually drove this, this uh, actually this is the left rear wheel, this is the front of the rover over here, the left rear wheel drove it up onto the, the face of this, this rock, uh, which is actually not really unexpected. Uh, the, we've seen this sort of thing in tests before when we're trying to do this type of fine placement. And this is really showing you the, the true capabilities of the rover to, uh, to essentially protect itself from uh, things that we might uh, inadvertently tell it to do here on the ground. What basically happened is within the, the, uh, the bogey system here, it, it has a set of potentiometers which detect when the angle gets too high uh, for uh, you know, an acceptable traverse and it essentially stops wherever it is. And so in this case, it stopped with the, the wheel sitting there sort of uh, partially up on the rock. Um, what we'll do today, uh, in fact, we've already built the sequences and are currently testing them, is essentially just to drive slightly forward, turn a little bit and back up, in, back the APXS up back into the, the rock. And we, we, really, we feel really confident, given how close we are, that we'll be able to put it on, on Yogi today. So uh, this, uh, while it may look a little interesting, this is definitely something that uh, we've tested and uh, we're, we're uh, really truly testing out the capabilities of the rover at this point. So, um, Let's see, other things going on today. Uh, we are, uh, have a little bit less downlink today planned, only about two hours. Um, we're sharing the 70 meter antenna we have uh, at Canberra with uh, the Galileo project and so uh, we have to cut short our downlink by a little bit. Uh, nevertheless, we'll still get about 53 megabits of, of data um, uh, split into actually two different downlink sessions. One that occurred about 6 p.m. this evening uh, for about half an hour, and the other one which will be about an hour and a half or so starting at 12.30 uh, a.m. tonight and finishing at about 2. Uh, again, 
those uh, that downlink will include sort of the normal set of products, the end of day image like this one, um, the uh, spectral spots of different targets around the lander. Uh, but also we're going to reacquire a, a major panorama called the gallery pan, which is a, a full 360 color panorama um, from the lander all the way out to the horizon. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be the first real true color of, of everything. While we're watching this, we're going to uh, give you one more chance to look at that first fender bender on Mars. You can see if you look very closely out on the chin of Yogi Bear, you can see the uh, forward wheel of the rover as it moved up on that side. We'll keep listening while you look at this yeah, picture. APXS on the rock will take a set of images as well from its, both its forward cameras out of the area off to the, in front of the, the, the rover, plus use the rear camera to, to look at the spot at which it placed the APXS. Uh, so we probably won't get that data back tonight because of the priority of getting this, this full, full color pan. Uh, but we should get it tomorrow, and it should allow us to see very clearly where we put the APXS down. So with that, uh, I'll pass it on to Justin. He can talk about the uh, movie. Okay. Thanks, Richard. Um, the image that Richard showed, the rover end of day image, uh, was designed to uh, assess the location of the rover and use, use the stereo capability of the M camera to help the rover team plan their traverse for the next, <coughs> next day. One of the things that we've been experimenting with the past few days or during the mission is the idea of taking pictures of the rover as it moves around and assembling these pictures into a rover movie. Um, these images are useful for the team, the rover team, because they can see how well the rover actually follows its uh, intended trajectory, and they're also just fun to watch. So uh, without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and roll the, the movie here. This is uh, the rover on its way to Yogi moving, takes a turn, and if you look at the APXS right before it starts driving forward, <laughs> you can see it pop out ready to uh, jump on the rock. <laughs> so, this, uh, this, this actually allowed the, the rover team to instantly assess uh, what actually happened with the rover. It actually drove a little too far forward, got a little too enthusiastic. <laughs> um, and of course, it has its own personality, and it's, it can be shown here. So, but basically, what we do to uh, generate this movie is we plan with the rover team, and they, of course, know where the rover is going to be. So we get these points on the Martian surface um, and get the timing so that we can point to these points when we think that the rover will be there. And we've been pretty successful in predicting these points. Um, we're getting, we're getting better and better at it. Um, it you saw, probably saw a couple days ago the first rover movie. Uh, the rover just took off out of the scene uh, because it went faster than we thought it would. But now we're getting, getting an idea of uh, how fast it goes, so we're getting pretty, pretty good at doing this. And that particular movie uh, was a 20-image movie. Uh, the images are compressed at 24 to 1, which is still pretty good for uh, the movie. Um, and it played about 40 times real speed. The rover actually drives fairly slow. So to show the movie, we speed it up, um, and it makes a nice little assessment set of images. Um, that's all I had to say about the rover movie. I just wanted to show one more slide. The rover team really wanted somebody to show us at, at the press conference today. So if you go to the screen, uh, that's the image from the rover, uh, one of the front cameras. You can see the lander on the left. Um, that's all I had to say. I'll go ahead and pass it on to Carol. Okay, our uh, project is called Virtual Reality for Mars Pathfinder, and uh, this is probably going to be the first that you guys have heard about it. Um, we were selected as participating scientists, <clears throat> and I'm uh, actually uh, the lead representative, but uh, what I represent is a team of people at NASA Ames Research Center uh, in a group called the Intelligent Mechanisms Group that's led by Michael Sims, who's sitting over here. Raise your hand, Mike. <laughs> um, the, uh, the idea of this uh, project was to provide uh, scientific visualization with a high fidelity uh, sense of presence <clears throat> using pho photorealistic virtual reality. So what I'm going to show you is actually not a video. It's uh, back on the, uh, in Building 230, Ted Blackman is uh, running our uh, uh, real-time terrain model. And so how this works is we start with a, uh, a grid um, <clears throat> and a lander model. Uh, and you can see the, uh, I don't know quite how to run this mouse thing here, but uh, here's our lander model down here in the center. And the first thing that we get um, is 
lander orientation. So from that, we uh, orient our lander so that we're lined up with North Angle on the spacecraft. And from the first set of uh, stereo images, we start to develop, uh, from the stereo disparity, we develop a uh, terrain model. <clears throat> now how we're doing this is we send uh, imp data back to NASA Ames Research Center where we have a team of people who uh, are generating from each, uh, basically the parallax on the stereo images, are generating a three-dimensional terrain model which has an XYZ position for every point on the terrain. And so each Im imp image then is used to generate um, XYZ position and then the pixel information, the, the color, the, the image information, is projected back on that <clears throat> uh, three-dimensional terrain uh, using a process we call the stereo pipeline that was invented by Eric Zabinden of our team. Um, so we start with this blank grid, we pop the images into the grid, and then uh, the information is fully there to do a fly through the model. So <clears throat> um, Ted will start uh, zooming around in the model so you can see um, the capabilities. <clears throat> so back here, as you see, we have an image of, uh, I'm not really getting it with this uh, pointer here. We have an image of the rover, and we can pop up the names of the rocks within the terrain model, and here's Yogi, and here's Barnacle Bill. And this is a, a real imp image. And any place you don't see data is some place it was actually shadowed when these images were taken. So the rover was in the way, basically. So you're not seeing a terrain model um, where the rover was in the way, even though you can zoom around and see the back side of things. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, as I say, all the data is being shipped to Ames, processed by our team at Ames, and then shipped back here. And the, the whole round trip process is only taking us about uh, 15 minutes per quadrant of the big uh, monster panorama. Um, or about two or three, two minutes per image pair. Um, so one of the things that we can do with this, we can use it as a planning and a scientific analysis tool, as, as I was mentioning. Um, we can make measurements. So for example, Ted's going to illustrate um, <clears throat> the uh, making a measurement between Barnacle Bill and Yogi. So we provided this to the rover team uh, and to the science team in planning. Okay, we're going to do this traverse from Barnacle Bill to Yogi. How far is it? Um, <clears throat> And um, 